Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the RSA conference in downtown San Francisco at Moscone Center, 40,000 people talking about security, especially with things like IoT and 5G coming uh, just right around the corner, so it's important. And we're excited to be joined by industry veteran George Gerchow. He's VP Security and Compliance at Sumo Logic. George, welcome. Thanks, great to be here. Having a fantastic show so far, so thank you. So it's funny, before you came on, you knew, you knew our last guest, it's, it, and he even commented, yeah, it's a big world, it's 40,000 people, but this is like all the world's security experts in one building. They're all right here, right now. So if you wanted to plan a, a massive terrorist Don't attack, say that, <laughs> it's fine. Right here, right well, now. they have a lot of security, it's funny you're laughing, but there's guard dogs and I got my bag oh. checked a bunch of times, so I guess it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense, but yes, everyone's here, all the who's who, and it was great to see Tom before me. And the, sure. uh, and, and the challenges just keep continuing, right, with IoT, it's coming right around the corner, connected devices, sensors, it's funny in your goodie bag here at RSA, they even give you the little the little thing to hide the camera on your it, on your laptop, right? They, they really do. I mean, everything's connected, right? I mean, there is no more hard shell, soft center perimeter to secure anymore. It's all out there. It's a hostile world, and uh, you just got to do your best to protect yourself. All right. Well, hopefully, you guys all stay <laughs> on the light side and don't go to the dark side. Yeah, absolutely. So we're talking a lot about threats and, mm -hmm. and threat intelligence. Yeah. Give us a kind of an update on what you're working on, you know, kind of what's your top of mind in this area. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, at, at Sumo Logic, we have a security analytics platform built at scale, multi-tenant in the cloud, native born. Um, part of my job responsibility is to secure that platform. Well, one of the things that we were missing, quite honestly, was threat intelligence feeds coming into that platform to be able to do deeper forensics on malicious IPs, indicators of compromise around URLs and domain names. So now we're offering to our customers integrated threat intelligence into security analytics for free. <laughs> and now it's here at RSA to be able to do deeper forensics around some of those indicators of compromise and the bad guys that you were talking about. <laughs> so now though with the with the security analytics, hopefully you guys can see things faster, you can pick up patterns quicker, you know, you can use real-time streaming things like Spark to actually get ahead of the curve instead of the, what we always hear, it's been 250 days since you knew uh, that you were uh, Compromise. Yeah, you're exactly right. It, it's getting to the root cause much faster, you know, because you have so many different things to ha focus on as a security team. Like my team alone is constantly getting things flagged up all the time that we may want, not want to pay attention to. But those things that are really critical, that needle in the haystack that you have to dive into, that's a potential threat or vulnerability right away, we want to surface those up very, very quickly. So we drink our own champagne, we're running it internally, and then now we're offering it externally to our customers as well too. And you just can't do that without machines and automation, right? It's just not possible to keep up with the volume of activity and to, and to find that needle within just the mass of things that you guys are keeping an eye on. You're exactly right, and especially being in the cloud, right? Think about the dynamic, you know, things that are taking place. You know, IP's constantly changing. What's my system today may be your system tomorrow. Right. So having that more real-time, deeper visibility into what's taking place on those high-thread items, that's even more critical once they're moving out to the cloud, for sure. Right, and you guys have been involved with AWS. I think we interviewed Sumo Logic, like yep. AWS uh, Summit 2013 right. in this very building. Right. Um, we're native born in AWS, there you go. So, so great memory. So how, so, so how does kind of the cloud impact it, just from more of a general security point of view, people's expectations of behavior of their applications oh and their data? And it's just right, it's just, it's, it's like the dial tone, right? It's like almost like Ma Bell. It's just supposed to be there right. and flex up, flex down as ever I need it. Obviously you got to worry about keeping that real, keeping it safe. How has that impacted the way uh, that customers expect security? Right, so well customers now, it's actually behavior of a different way too. They're so scared, some of them, of oh my gosh, my data is leaving beyond my control. But the reality is, is I can use some of that scale and some of those automated systems in the cloud to make the data more secure once it moves out there. I can leverage the power of code to really lock down how that data is protected against both inside sources and external sources. So it's really, to, to us, it's been an advantage point. Yeah. Being native born, understanding how the cloud works and how to secure data in the cloud, and then now sharing that with our customers has really put us ahead of the curve. Like the industry's just now catching up to where we're at. Like you right. said, 2013, we were here talking about cloud, and now here we are, right? Right, right. Where other people before were like, we're never going to move our stuff out there. Well, guess what? Right. You're moving out there now. <laughs> and you guys can leverage cloud yourself in terms of your own applications, right? To grow Absolutely. and scale. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, at AWS reInvent, they have the Tuesday night with James Hamilton, which uh, right. you probably yes. went to. It's like a rock star show. Right. But when he goes through the scale of the way of the infrastructure that AWS can deploy because they have such mass scale. I mean, to try to compete with that as an individual company, pretty tough. Yeah, it's not going to happen, you know, and it's the same thing with us, you know, so if you're really going to do security analytics at scale, well, it's about scale. 
multiple data sources. I want to be able to go from 10 terabytes to 20 terabytes overnight and then start looking for those security threats. Well, that's what we do. We built our platform in the cloud to scale at that rate, but now we're just heavily focused on security content and solving problems as people start moving their workloads out to the cloud. We've been there for a while, so we're helping people on. Look, we're learning like everyone else every day. Things change, as you mentioned before, but we have a pretty good approach as to how we lock down our own environment and we're right. just sharing it externally now. So the other big theme we keep hearing over and over here at the show is collaboration. And, mm -hmm. and companies, you know, kind of co-opetition, which is the Silicon Valley way, has always Absolutely. been. Absolutely, no question. You know, to share threat information with your uh, uh, partners in the industry to try to help get a leg up on the, on the bad guys. How have you seen that kind of collaboration, kind of environment change over the last several years? I, I am so glad you brought that up because it is an ecosystem. Like for us, we're taking the threat feeds from CrowdStrike who's you know, one of the leaders in the, the threat feed space. We're also partnering up with one login at this show to really start locking down people's credentials when they come in. And then also great partners like Trend Micro. It takes an ecosystem. There is no silver bullet. There is no one company, one solution that solves the problem. It takes a collaboration of vendors and partners to really be able to get this done. And I feel it and live it internally. Right, right. All right, going to give you the last word, George. All right. So it's, it's uh, February. What are your top priorities for 2017? What are we going to be talking about a year from now? this show. Okay, so one of the top priorities for me is definitely DDoS attacks in the cloud. You know, so people being able to launch a DDoS attack within AWS at AWS and having AWS eat itself. Like, literally, this keeps me up at night, you know? So that's one Where's of my Scott priorities. Scott, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. So anyway, that's one of the things that I'm focused on right now. All right, sure. excellent. Well, I know you got to run to the booth. It's a busy show. Great I know show. you probably have meetings with 39,995 <laughs> of these other people. He's George Gerchow, I'm Jeff Frank. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff.